There you Good. All right, I'd like to welcome everybody to, uh, is that working back there, you can hear it? Okay. Welcome everybody to our uh, 2012 back football preview. Uh, we have a little different format than we've done in the past. Uh, we're going to have the players and coach up here. Um, going to have the coach was, uh, give us some opening comments about the season. And uh, then we're just going to open it up for Q&A to the players and coach uh, at, at that time. Um, we have a half hour for each team. Um, if we only go about 20 minutes, then you guys can have some one-on-ones with, with some of these guys if you'd like to. So um, also not on the schedule. Uh, at 11 o'clock, we'll have uh, Jeff Hurd um, speak to the media as well, so uh, right before lunch. So uh, that'll be done in here as well. So. Uh, with that, I'd like to go ahead and introduce uh, Texas State and uh, Coach Franchoni if, uh, give us some opening comments. All right. Thank you. Good to see all of you. It's good to be here. It's an exciting time for us at Texas State. Uh, we've had so many things happening in our university from uh, the 18 months ago, two years ago, that we started this process. Uh, we're about to complete our stadium renovation. Uh, we've spent about $70 million in new facilities in the last few years. Our stadium is really going to be, a, I think, a classic one, uh, a great one to play in. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, you know, the, uh, the new suites in the stadium, uh, the, the new stadium itself, the turf extensions, the, uh, uh, the process of adding staff and, and uh, doing all the uh, things that uh, we need to do to facilitate this move from FCS to FBS as smooth as possible. And I do call this a process because I think it is a process. I'm not sure what step this is, but uh, it, it, it's the next step for us. And uh, we, we are blessed that we have uh, great support from our, our administration, our president and athletic director that has been so supportive of the things that we're trying to do to to make this move, I, I think, um, you know, sometimes you make a move like this and <clears throat> you, uh, you make the move, but you, you don't make the move with the purpose of being successful. And I think our administration has given us uh, a, a device or a mechanism or ways to have a chance to make the move, uh, you know, as, as positive as, as we can. Uh, and we understand that uh, moving up a division is, is going to be a challenge. Our schedule is a challenge, but we're looking forward to it. Uh, our players are looking forward to it. And um, um, <clears throat> I think the the fact that the, the teams come into our stadium will be impressed with the facilities and the stadium and, and the, uh, the atmosphere. Our students have been very much behind this uh, uh, move. Um, and, of course, for me personally, um, it's a little bit bittersweet because, um, you know, I, I cut my teeth in the Western Athletic Conference back in uh, the 1990s uh, at New Mexico uh, with the days of Joe Tiller and Lavelle Edwards and Ted Tolner and Fisher DeBerry and a lot of great coaches. And um, the climate's changed, the landscape has changed, and uh, it was exciting for me coming to Texas State and exciting for me to, to know that we would be a part of the Western Athletic Conference again uh, because of uh, uh, the great time that we had and, and, and uh, the great coaches and people that were a part of it from uh, the various commissioners and, and things to all the administrators and things like that. So uh, it's one, one and done uh, for us in, in this conference, but uh, I don't think that diminishes the excitement of, of what we're doing this year one bit. I think our players are very excited and uh, our community is excited, our students are excited, our alumni are excited. Uh, this is a big step for Texas State. Um, <clears throat> and just to, to briefly talk about our players, um, um, you know, we have, uh, I think we have two really good running backs. Marcus is one of them, uh, Marcus Curry, who's with me here today. Terrence Franks is the other one. Dexter Amati is going to come back from knee injury, and I think Dexter uh, probably would have had a good year last year, but he got hurt during two a days, and so he didn't get to play, and so he's back healthy. Um, our quarterback position uh, right now, I don't know whether it'll be Sean or Rutherford or Tyler Arndt to start, but both of them elevated their games in the spring. And, when, and when, just going back to our team just a second before I go on with that, uh, I, I think our you know year two is for a football coach and a program I think is always – uh, 
I don't know if the right word is easier, but more comfortable uh, maybe than year one. Uh, year one, uh, I always say, is a clean chalkboard every day because the players haven't been through a full cycle with you. Now they have. They understand the systems. They know what we're doing. They know how we practice. They know the speed with which we practice, the repetitions with which we practice. Uh, they know how we do things. In our spring practice, I think it was very safe for us to say that we have a better football team than we did at any time last year. Now, if you look at our schedule, you know we have more challenges than we had uh, with that schedule last year, too. So we, we got to get ready to meet that. Um, just uh, back on Tyler Arndt, I, I don't think Tyler was ever 100% last year coming off knee surgery from the year before, and I think it showed in his game, and that changed a good bit uh, in spring practice. We have to build, rebuild our offensive line, but I really think it's going to be a better offensive line than last year. Uh, just from the size and strength gains and, and uh, the things that's happened. We moved Adley Ashragapur from the defensive line to the O-line. He'll probably start at tackle. We moved Jeff Clearmon from D-line to O-line. He'll, he'll, he'll play for us at guard. Uh, so I, I think that has a chance to smooth itself out and be better. We have good tight ends. Chase Harper, uh, David Lewis, Brad Miller. We have guys that, that are, are pretty proven there. And if, if there's a strength on offense, it's probably running back with these guys and tight end. Uh, defensively, um, I think uh, the things that we know we have to do there are, are pressure the quarterback and, and get the yards per carry down a little bit uh, uh, in the running game. Uh, Thomas Evans, uh, Blake McCullough, Deshaun Williams, uh, Jeff, uh, or, uh, Jordan Norfleet, um, all those guys will be up front for us. Kamu Tulele, who's new junior college player that came in. Uh, Joplo Bartu is a, pr a pretty quality linebacker. We've got a couple transfers in that should help us there. Uh, our secondary is is pretty much uh, back intact. Uh, Daryl has played a lot of football uh, at corner here and does a great job for us. Uh, these are two uh, fine young men. They're very good examples of our program. Uh, they're good people. They're good students. Uh, they're good players. Uh, they're team first kind of guys, so you're going to enjoy your time with them today. And and uh, I think they're great representatives of our of our players and of our football team and our football program. Um, but our secondary with Key by Darrell and, and Craig Mager came on and played the other corner last year, and he's back healthy. Uh, we, it enabled us to move Philip Benning to safety. Uh, Xavier Daniels is back at free safety. Aaron Matthews is back at a safety. So. Uh, Jason McLean, we have guys that have played some football there. Will Johnson will probably be our kicker and punter. Uh, will has to be more consistent, but he has a tremendous leg. He broke the school record for distance on a field goal last year. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised with a little wind. He couldn't hit a 60-yarder. He, he's got a tremendous leg. Uh, but he was inconsistent as a freshman last year and knows that. So we, we need him to be consistent to make sure we get points when we're in the red zone. So fire at Will or fire at Marcus or fire at Darrell. Questions, just let me know and I'll bring the microphone over to you. Coach Scott Bilo, Power How are you today? Good. Uh, once a, first of all, congratulations for moving up to FBS. I know it's a big Thanks. move for you guys. Uh, what, is, what is the buzz like around campus, first of all, joining the WAC this year and with the increased size in the stadium and you're getting some <clears throat> quality schools coming in to play you guys in San Marcos? How, what's the buzz like around stadium around the program right now? Well, these guys can speak to it as well as anybody, but I think it's pretty good. You know, our students voted to increase student fees to, to do this move. Uh, that was part of the funding process of this. And uh, so they were very much behind it, very excited about it. Uh, when you have 35,000 students, you got a pretty good base right there. And uh, uh, we're blessed in that we have a, a good student body and, a, and great academics at our school. And uh, uh, our, our students are pretty supportive of football games. But I think the, the exciting thing for all of us and, and is that we are – uh, there is a, a great buzz and an interest and, and uh, an excitement about the Western Athletic Conference, the teams that are coming to town. Um, our home opener is September 8th against Texas Tech. I, I think that will be an overflow crowd. Uh, so it's going gonna, it's gonna to be an exciting year in those regards. October 13th, I think, is an exciting day to look forward to in my eyes because that's our first WAC game and it ha we get to play it at home. So that's, I think that's a big date. And then... Uh, you know, we, I think all of us look forward to the UTSA game on Thanksgiving weekend. Um, 
we have so much respect for them and for Coach Coker. I've known for a long time, and uh, I think that's going to be a great series right there. And uh, playing on Thanksgiving weekend in Texas is big. Uh, and playing in the Alamo Dome is, is going to be exciting for these guys. Some of them have probably done that before. But you guys want to come in on the, the buzz around campus or anything? I mean, I know just going around campus, everyone asks me things like, hey, how's the team going to be? You know, we got season tickets. We can't wait for the Tech game, things like that. So I know it's people are really excited. Even our teachers come up to us. And, you know, just the other day a teacher asked me, he was like, how y'all going to be? I got season tickets and things like that. So I think everybody's just really excited, excited about the new move, <clears throat> excited to really come inside and see the new stadium, you know, when it's all done up and finished. And I think it's just pretty exciting for everybody. Yeah, I can second Daryl on that. Uh, every time I've go to, gone to class this summer, uh, I have somebody asking me, how's the team doing? Are we looking good for this year? And I can't wait for the stadium to be done. It's looking nice when I drop by. And we're ready to go to that Tech game. And so it's, it's looking really nice. And not only the students, but also the community. Because every time I'm going out, I'm hearing people saying they're ready to go for the Tech game, ready for, ready for us to be in the WAG, ready to see us do big things this year. So it's exciting. You're not supposed to say every day I've gone to class. You go to class every day. Right? <laughs> hey, uh, Tavin Stuke from the Utah Statesman. You've talked about some of the exciting things that you guys are going through with the new move. What are some of the challenges that you're also facing? Well, um, you know, first off, I think uh, this will be our first year to get to 85 scholarships. So um, we're a little bit, for, for our players, um, going to play some um, new teams that, um, you know, there isn't a familiarity with, um, obviously. Um, I think the schedule, you know, um, 18 months ago, two years ago, when you decide to make this move, uh, as we all know in college football today, schedules are made five and ten years out. So uh, we had to kind of scramble to, to fill uh, a schedule. And uh, as a result, um, we're not just sticking our toes in the water. We're diving in with, with a pretty, uh, pretty challenging schedule. That, uh, I think our guys are excited about playing it. Uh, but we, we know that we – I think our work ethic this summer has probably improved because they know that they've got a big challenge ahead of – uh, in this schedule, and, and uh, uh, they know they've had to prepare well to, to do it. One of the good things we have in this is that we have two open dates, and I think managing 12 games with two open dates helps us a little bit um, to manage the schedule a little bit better and, and to manage the, the emotional, physical, and mental process that I think it's going to take for us to play this type of schedule the first year. For all of you, uh, Bob Akami and Idaho TV, um, did you notice last year when you play the bigger schools, you play Tech, you play uh, Wyoming, do you have a sense of the talent differences you run into and now you're playing with all the time, uh, other than your first line versus their first line, but maybe also the depth as well, and I'll, I'll start with the players maybe. Could you tell on the field the differences and do you have a sense of how you're going to fit in talent-wise against these teams you're playing now? Um. I didn't really see too much of a difference. Maybe the only thing was like the size, but as speed goes, like everybody's fast. If you run a 4-4 in Division Two, you run a 4-4 in the NFL, it's all the same. So I feel like the size was probably the biggest thing. So I feel like we'll be all right. Um, same thing like he said. Guy, I mean, they're fast, just like they were when we were in the Southland Conference. I mean, just like we played Sam Houston. And, I mean, y'all saw how fast they were when they made it to the championship game. So, I mean, speed-wise, kind of the same. But, I mean, as far as size, maybe there was a pretty big difference in the linemen. The linemen may have been a little bit bigger, a little stronger maybe. But, I mean, maybe not too much of a big difference. I think depth is <clears throat> something as a coach that you, you acknowledge a little bit sometimes. Um, the quality of depth, um, guys ready to play. Uh, you know, we were ahead of Texas Tech 10-9 to in Lubbock at halftime last year and had a great opening drive to start the third quarter, and then we turned the ball over. And um, it, turnovers were our Achilles heel offensively last year, and I think we'll be better at that if spring practice is an indication this year. We have to be if we want to be in some of these games. But probably depth is the, the most acknowledged part of it. I mean, there's athleticism, and 
a good athletes across the board when you play Texas Techs and Houston's and people like that. There's no doubt about that. Uh, you have to, as a coach, try to put your best players in positions to have success against their, their offense and defense. And, and that's what we try to do as coaches uh, at all levels. But um, sometimes uh, injuries can start to, you know, have as big an effect on things as anything. And maybe the first thing is just mentally, you got to, I mean, you got to be telling your first unit, you're as good as these guys. And I don't think I have to tell these guys that. I think they, they believe they are. Already? I think, I, I, you know, they all believe they should have been FBS level players. And, and these two guys are FBS level players. I mean, uh, there's no limit on what they can accomplish this year. Now, do we have enough uh, to meet all the challenges on this schedule? That's, that remains to be seen. Uh, but uh, I don't, I don't have to tell our players that they can compete at this level, I, I, and they can speak to it. But I, I think uh, when you talk to players, they, they believe they belong and, and they believe they can compete at that level. Is that right, guys? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The situation playing in the WAC for one year and then make, knowing that you're making a move, is there that temptation to maybe look forward a little bit? How difficult is it to keep that focus? I, I don't think it's um, – these guys aren't concerned about the Sun Belt. They're concerned about getting ready for Houston right now. And um, I think as the head coach and, you know, in charge of the entire program, it's my job to – kind of keep a, a second eye on the Sun Belt and how things are going there and, and what we're headed for. But our focus is, you know, we, the great thing or, or one of the things about coaches, we live day to day, week to week at this time of the year. We don't, we don't uh, live in uh, the Sun Belt. Uh, you know, and we went through this last year. Uh, it's not like this is new to us. We were in the, we were playing a Southland conference schedule looking at the WAC last year and uh, but we, they, these guys stayed focused on the task at hand. They have to if they're going to play their best, and they can't do anything about what's ahead. These two will never play in the Sun Belt. They're seniors. Uh, so it, it, it doesn't – they're not interested in, in talking about that. They're interested in talking about the WAC. And I think our, our team is so excited about what we're going to go through and, and the opportunities that we have that uh, our focus is not on anything other than meeting the challenges of this schedule right now. On December 1st, uh, when that last second ticks off the clock against New Mexico State, we're going to start looking at the next one. But right now, we're going to look at this one. Any <coughs> questions? All right, thanks, you guys. All right, thank you. Thank you.